What's up guys, moving on to the next concept. In this video, we're gonna talk about agency costs. And to illustrate what agency costs are, let's start off with a simple example. Let's pretend that you want to sell your car, but you're busy, you don't really know how the car market works or how to value a car. So you go on the market and you hire an agent to sell the car for you for a fixed sum. So let's say you're paying him $1,000. He's gonna get paid that fixed amount of $1,000 no matter what value of the car he sells it for. So whether he sells it for 20,000 or 15,000, he's always getting that fixed amount of $1,000. And right away from that example, you can tell that the interests are not really aligned. You want the maximum value of the car that you can sell it for, but the agent just wants to sell the car to receive his fixed amount of $1,000. And that example right there, that misalignment of interest is an example of an agency cost to you because for you to get the maximum value of the car, the agent is going to have to sell harder. He's gonna to have to work harder. He's gonna to have to bargain more with customers and that's gonna take more effort on his part and he's getting paid the same amount whether he puts in less effort or more effort into selling the car for you. Now, in a perfect world, no matter what job someone is hired for, if they've agreed for that job for that fixed amount of money, up front, then they should be obligated to do the best job possible. If this guy agreed up front that he's going to take a fixed sum to try to get the maximum value of your car when he sells it, then he should be obligated to try to do that. However, in a real world situation, that doesn't always happen. There's different personality types. Some people do work hard no matter what they're paid for. Some people like to take the easy way out. They like to try to get the maximum benefit with the least amount of work as possible. And just the fact that you have to deal with that, potentially deal with that when you're hiring someone, that is an agency cost to you. Now there are two types of agency costs that can arise. There can be indirect agency costs and direct agency costs. Now the best way to think about indirect agency costs is to think about them as being invisible to you or being invisible to the owner. So an example of an indirect agency cost is one that we were just discussing. So to be more specific, let's say that your agent sells your car for $10,000, but he could have sold it for $11,000. Now to you, that cost is invisible because you don't know too much about the market. It's why you hired an agent in the first place. But that extra $1,000 that you left on the table from an outside perspective, that is visible and that extra thousand dollars that you could have sold your car for represents a loss to you. And that's an example of an indirect agency cost, one that exists, but you as the owner don't necessarily see. Now, in contrast, direct agency costs are ones that are visible to you or visible to the owner. So they're expenses that exist for hiring the agent that wouldn't have existed if you didn't hire him. So for example, let's say that the agent comes up to you and he says, I'm willing to try to get the maximum value for your car and I'm willing to put in the extra work, put in the extra hours, but because I have to stay in the office longer making calls an extra three hours than I'm used to, I'm going to miss dinner with my family, I would like you to pay for my dinner that I'm gonna have at the office. I want you to start paying for my meals. So these meals are a direct agency cost. It's an expense that exists because you hired this agent and this expense wouldn't have existed if you tried to sell the car yourself without trying to hire an agent. Another example of a direct agency cost is let's say that uh, you have a friend who knows a lot about the car market but unfortunately you couldn't hire him as your agent because he was busy with his own stuff. But he is willing to come in for maybe let's say 200 bucks and talk to you for an hour or two and go over the uh, documentation for the car that your agent sells to let you know whether you got a good deal or not. So it's almost like your friend is auditing the agent that you hired. And the fact that you have to pay your friend some money to do that is a direct agency cost to you. It's a direct expense that you see that's visible to you because you hired this 
agent. So we just went over a bunch of different problems that can arise when you hire an agent to do a job for you. So what are some possible solutions? What are some possible ways that you can align the interests of you and any agent that you hire? Now the most common way to try to align the interests is that you pay the agent a percentage of the sale value. So the higher that he sells the car for, the more he's going to get paid. However, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that he will get the maximum possible amount for you. Sometimes uh, there's agents that would take a lower pay because they don't have to work as much and you're still getting screwed in the end. So it's not a foolproof plan, but it's a possible solution. So now that we went over a simple example to illustrate how agency costs work and now you have indirect agency costs, direct agency costs, possible solutions. Let's relate this example to how agency costs work in finance. So instead of someone selling their car and hiring an agent to try to maximize the sale value, in finance, shareholders of a company, they're also the owners of the company, as we've mentioned before, they hire managers to run the company and to maximize the shareholder value. So, as with any owner-agent relationship, there are going to be agency costs that arise. So, for example, managers may try to increase their wealth, but that not, may not necessarily be what they were hired to do, which was increase the shareholder's wealth. Common example of an indirect agency cost is that management may pass on risky projects that increase shareholder value. So there can be a project that management can take on, has the opportunity to take on, that shareholders want them to take on because the potential payoff is worth the risk, but management, because they're not getting any part of that payoff, they don't want to take that risk because if the project goes bad, then they may lose their jobs. And the opposite case is also possible. So management may take on projects that shareholders don't want them to take on or projects that don't increase shareholder value. So the management may take on a project that increases the assets of a company but it doesn't make it a better company. It makes it maybe a little bit less efficient. Maybe the profit margins go down, but maybe the management doesn't care that the profit margins are going down. Maybe they're just concerned with growing the size of the company because it makes it more secure. Because let's say you have two companies. One company has $1 million worth in assets, and then another company has a billion dollars worth in assets. Well, the management that's working in the billion dollar company is probably getting paid more because it's a larger company than the company that has a million dollar in assets, but the million dollar company may actually be a better company. It may actually be worth more for you to invest in the million dollar company over the long term than for you to invest in the billion dollar company in the long term. So the shareholder value doesn't necessarily increase with the company getting larger. And then direct agency costs for shareholders when they hire management, pretty much the same as the example we went over before, just perks, so meals. Shareholders may also hire an audit team to come in and make sure that management is properly doing their job. You may also want to add jets, so you see large companies, you see CEOs and high executives flying in jets all around. Do shareholders want to be buying these jets? Is there any true value for the company? It's a debatable topic. Maybe the management, when they're flying in these jets, they feel better, so they do a better job, and therefore they increase the shareholder value. But again, it's debatable. And just overall, a lot of potential issues that can arise when shareholders hire managers that shareholders have to be conscious of. Now, with all these issues, are there any possible solutions? Is there a way to align the interests of the management and the shareholders so they are both mutually benefiting from the same goals? Well, the most common solution is similar to the one that we did in the car example. Basically, you want to give management a piece of the company, so include stock as compensation. 
However, how much stock do you include in the compensation? Do you make the compensation all about stock? So don't pay them a salary, but just make it purely equity? Or would managers feel a little bit less secure then if they're not getting paid a salary and then do a worse job? Again, that's a whole other topic, managerial compensation, but it's a possible solution. You include stock as compensation, so management wants to increase the stock value because they also are owners of the company. So in conclusion, that's how agency costs work. Make sure that you're really familiar with this concept. It's going to come up on your midterm. There's no real technical or quantitative part to it. It's more of a qualitative subject, but know how agency costs work in terms of finance, know how to differentiate between indirect and direct agency costs, and know possible solutions to minimize agency costs. So to align the interests of shareholders and management. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.